it's totally possible to find a camera for YouTube videos based around your budget. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down some of the best cameras for YouTube, all the way from cameras under $100 up until cameras that are around $2,500. So let's get into it. You gotta just press record. So the first camera I wanted to actually break down was this Anchor Power Comp C200 2K USB webcam. This is a camera that is around $70. I bought this camera around Cyber Monday and I honestly got it for around like 35, 40 bucks. And I was blown away at the quality that this camera produces. Obviously being a USB camera, you would have to capture your video via a laptop or a computer. Nonetheless, still a great camera that you can use to make videos under $100. The other option when it comes to under $100 is just actually getting accessible to use your smartphone because most people actually have a smartphone that shoots great video and if you get a good light and a good mic solution you could totally crush and the light I would recommend is the softbox light kit from Mount Dog comes in at around $60 and then you can get this wireless mic for around $30, really putting you at under $100 and giving you a great solution. I even made a video around a setup like this. Those are some solutions that you can use to create YouTube videos under $100. This next portion of cameras are gonna be cameras that come in at under $500, with the first one being the Canon M200. This is a camera that kind of flew under the radar, but it's a great camera because it has a flip up screen so you could see yourself, and it has interchangeable lenses, and it uses Canon's EFM mount, which they have a ton of lenses offered. And it is important to say that it does shoot 4K video. However, it's very limiting. The Canon M200 really shines at 1080p, which is still totally fine. The Canon M200 does not have an external mic jack input, so you can't use an external mic to level up the audio unless you actually use a camera like this to live stream with and then use a separate USB mic to get better audio because this camera does have a clean HDMI out. So to use this for live streaming or video podcasting and things like that, it could totally work. Just important to note that it does not have that mic jack input. But this is a great camera because the lens selection that Canon offers with the EFM mount is incredible. But just definitely a camera that I think is worth the money if you can get around that hiccup. Now a really new camera that's out in the market is the Sony ZV one F. This is a $500 camera that it shoots a really crisp 4K image and it is important to note that it is a fixed lens. It gives you a nice medium wide shot, about a 20 millimeter equivalent, but I know some people will want the simplicity of a camera that doesn't do all that much and is easy to use. The ZV-1F would be just that, has a mic jack input, clean HDMI so you can live stream as well. So that is the ZV-1F. This next camera is actually brought to you by the sponsor of this video, and that is the Logitech Mevo. More than a camera, the Mevo is an ecosystem. So if you wanna create content that actually requires multiple angles, this would be one of the best options. The Mevo connects wirelessly to your phone or tablet to control and capture video. You can also live stream straight to a platform or use the app to zoom in and out to dial in your angles. The Mevo takes a micro SD card, but you can also capture video directly to your smartphone or tablet, making it super convenient to make some edits and then upload your video. As far as quality, it shoots 1080 HD video and you can get started multi-cam streaming right away with the Mevo Start 3 pack at $999 here in the US, or you can build your setup as you need with a single Mevo Start camera, which starts at around $400 at the time of shooting this video. Check out the link in the description below. Thank you Logitech for sponsoring this video. The next segment of cameras are cameras that fall under the $750 to under $800 price point. The first one I wanna talk about is the Sony ZV-1. This camera comes in at around $650, and this also is a point and shoot camera like the Sony ZV-1F. However, it's a little bit better in the sense that you do have the ability to zoom in, and I think there are some features that actually make it worth that extra investment as opposed to the ZV-1F, like internal ND filters. So if you wanna go vlogging outside, you could still get that good blurry background. The amount of accessories you can actually invest in around the Sony ZV-1. And because the Sony ZV-1 has been out a little bit longer, you can actually probably get it for around $500. But a great camera. I personally love the Sony ZV-1. The next camera would be the Canon M50 Mark II, which for a season was like one of the best cameras of all time when it came to YouTube. Now the Canon M50 Mark II is very similar to the Canon M50 
200, but the Canon M50 will have a flip out screen. It's a little bit of a bigger body, but it definitely isn't a 4K camera as you are limited with that crop and you lose focus features. And so it is still a great camera and I think is super trustworthy, but just know that you're getting a little bit of limited features. For around $700, I think it's a great deal still if you want a camera that gives good colors and will do the job. This next camera is the Sony ZV-E10 and I'm actually using it to film this video. This camera is coming in at right under $800 with the kit lens and honestly, I have nothing really bad to say about the Sony ZV-E10 other than it's not the best vlogging camera because it doesn't take shake all too well. It's a great stationary camera if you're gonna use it to live stream, do talking head videos. I think it's one of the best cameras that produces what some of the best images for its price point. Now, if you want a good camera to vlog with, I would give that to the Nikon Z30, which is about the same price. It's about $796, but I think the Sony Z30 is a great camera to vlog with that has incredible stabilization and shoots 4K video, has a lot of the same features that the Sony ZV-1 has, but it's just better at shaky footage. So you can do everything you need to do with the Nikon Z30. It just has limited lenses offered as it's a newer lens mount that Nikon offers, but overall, great camera for vlogging. These next cameras come in at right under $1,000, but the first camera I wanna talk about is the Canon R10, which is coming in at around $780 for the body, which let me just say right at the get-go is incredible because I actually love the Canon R10. It is a crop censored camera that has a flip out screen. It doesn't have a 30 minute record limit. Canon colors, which people absolutely love. The only thing about this camera, and I think it poses as its biggest flaw, is just that it's kind of new. So the lenses that are offered for it, kind of like the Nikon, there aren't many, but there are some great lenses. So, you know, I paired this camera with the 24 millimeter 1.8 prime lens and it will give you a really good look, but the camera just needed to be a little bit far away. If you're a Canon person, it's a great camera for around $800. The next camera is probably one of the most underrated cameras in my opinion, and that is the Canon M6 Mark II. And the Canon M6 Mark II literally has no flaws in my opinion. It's a perfect compact camera, and the lens mount it has is the EFM mount, which there's a plethora of lenses that you can get, and again, achieve a very similar shot to this. And honestly, I still use the Canon M6 Mark II, even to this day. I legit just have it like right here. It's a great camera, I personally love it. But the next camera under $2,500, starting with the Sony a7C, which comes in at $1,500, and this would be the first full frame camera that I would recommend. And honestly, what I love most about the Sony a7C is that this would be the most reliable camera, like straight up. If you wanna vlog with it, video podcast with it, live stream with it, you can do whatever you want with it because it's a workhorse of a camera. And what I mean by that is that you will never have battery issues, overheating issues. And I just love that it's a compact full frame camera. The next camera is the Canon EOS R and that comes in at around $1,600. And this camera is great as well. It would kind of be the big brother of the R10. The only downside to the EOS R would be like the file sizes. I think they're just a little bit big sometimes and if you don't have a proper workflow, it can get really clunky really quickly. However, still a great camera. The next camera I would recommend is the Sony FX30. This is a camera that came out in 2022 and is a crop sensor camera and it's more expensive than the a7C. However, the reason why it's more expensive is because it's a cinema camera, meaning it's really a video camera first and there's a lot of features that the FX30 has that the a7C doesn't. 120 frames per second in 4K, 10-bit footage. For most YouTube beginners, it would be a lot of a camera, but I think it's one of the best cameras at this price point and they actually have a version of it where you can buy the top handle that has an XLR input. That would be $2,200 with just the body. But what's cool about that is being able to plug in XLR microphones, like if you're doing a podcast or if you just want a really high quality condenser mic, but just really getting a legit dialed setup with the FX30 because of that option. And I really think it's one of the best cameras like available for this price point because of all the features and the quality of video it produces. I would say the only downside of it is you don't buy this camera and take photos with it. The FX30 really isn't a camera you take pictures with, but if you're just gonna use it for video, I think it's honestly one of the best. And now I would say the maximum I would spend on a camera would be the Sony a7 IV, which comes in at around $2,500. And this is just one of the greatest full frame cameras you can buy. And for what you get at that price point, if that sounds really expensive to you, I'm here to tell you 
it's an incredible deal. Like this camera shoots incredible 4K. There's actually more expensive Sony cameras that don't have as sharp as an image because the Sony a7 IV shoots 4K but it has a down sampled image, I believe from 6K. So it's really compressing a high resolution image into 4K and it would really just produce probably the sharpest image out of all the cameras. So if you wanted the best of the best, I would go with the Sony a7 IV. But I hope this video gave you kind of a guide and breakdown, but be sure to check out those links down in the description. And if you wanna check out another video from us here at Think Media, just click or tap the screen and I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.